Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. It is currently an overcast Wednesday out here in Laguna Hills, California. We got Parker's car, we got George, we got Daniel, the Prius, and you got my car, of course. Um, if you're new to my channel, my name is Spencer Burke. This is my E92 M3, and you can see that it's, uh, it's rather stock. There's not much going on with it, but we're trying to change that right now. I'm actually gonna go head over to Precision Dynamics, the only shop I trust with my car over in Costa Mesa, and we're gonna get some stuff done to it. Not aesthetics right now, but something that's way more important, which is actually getting the fluids done. So I wanted to educate everybody who wants to know more about fluids on what you need to do. So oil fluid, transmission fluid, I think differential fluid, and maybe even windshield wiper fluid. Without further ado, let's go. My favorite flex that I love to do. So I actually uploaded two feature videos over the last couple weeks, which one was a Gintani twin turbo E92, and then the other one was a Harop E90 supercharged car. Super happy with the YouTube results. Thank you to the new 1,500 subscribers over the last two weeks or so. I appreciate you guys. Plus, we're getting some crazy views. One quick favor to ask is that if you get any value from this video, please thumbs up the video, whether you're subscribed or not. It helps me grow on YouTube, and that's the goal. I want to keep growing and making cool videos for you guys. If you can give it a thumbs up, it helps me tremendously. One main thing that I've had a huge issue with on this specific car is very strange like vibrations coming from the idle And I just changed out the suspension to coilovers, which I don't know if that has anything to do with it But when I sit at stoplights, it'll sit at about 600 rpm It'll kind of not bounce, but it'll, it'll feel strange And I, I've had this experience before where when I fill up the car all the way people say it's the fuel breather valve or throttle actuators which I don't think it's either of those. I'm um, enough talking, let's go ahead over to the garage and see what's up with my car. So I don't think you can pick it up on video and it doesn't really show in the RPMs, but if I like hold the steering wheel, it kind of like shakes a little bit more than usual and it's not a consistent shaking. It's like, uh, it's almost like it, it like oscillates that's the right word. It like vibrates for a little bit, then goes away, and then it vibrates and goes away. And it's the it comes it comes from the front end, which I'm wonder if that's motor mounts or I, just, I haven't gotten an oil change yet on this car or throttle actuators or fuel breather valve. I don't know. I'm coming, Mike. That thing looks sick. Got BMWs everywhere. Where's the plug, Mike? So we're back with another video doing fluids today. Correct. And you told me that there's a lot that you told me about fluids that I was confused on, that you don't actually have to replace some of the fluids in these cars. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a sec though. Yeah. Oil first. All right, so over here is where we have the two oil drains. One's right here, another's right here. So it's designed to, so over here is actually where your actual pickup tube and drain is at. Actually, sorry, this is where the drain's at. Mm -hmm. This side's a pickup tube. So there's actually oil here, oil here, and you drain both these areas, they're both H6 right here and here. So we'll go ahead and drain it right now. So for those of you guys that don't know what H6 is, it's essentially an Allen key. So. And how many quarts sit in these cars? This is uh, 8.5. Okay. Liters. Okay, liters. <laughs> so these aren't supposed to be that tight. They're only supposed to be torqued down to 20 newton meters. Now you don't want to drain both at the same time unless... Why is there two? <clears throat> the return tube is right here. So it's going to fill up over here. And then the pickup is over here. Um, what they did is design this so that the oil can actually contain in here but have it as low as possible. Oh, okay. But you don't want oil to be sitting where the actual connecting rods are. That creates a lot of pressure when it goes down. So you want it to barely touch it, lubricate it, things like that. That makes In sense. In this case, this does not touch the actual oil on the bottom. There's actually a pump that circulates it to actually lubricate all that stuff. So that's why there's two. H6. Now, how does that oil look to you? It looks pretty dirty. It looks pretty old. Yeah. Um, it also looks pretty brown it smells gnarly oil. too yeah so usually with oil sometimes there's fuel inside of it um, that's normal just because of the combustion chamber it flows through um, some oil and 
obviously feel gets inside of it. So you can actually smell it right now. That's what I was saying. That smell is pretty gnarly. Yeah, oil's not supposed to smell like that. Look, it's having trouble draining because that's how thick <laughs> the oil is. When do you think this oil was changed last? Because uh, this looks bad. Probably like 10,000. Dang. Look at this. Not even draining. <laughs> that's not a good sign. <laughs> well, thankfully I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> This is actually your first oil change, right? Yeah, first oil change in this car since I bought it. When you drain oil, usually you want it to be thinner, right? Because right now it's thick. Yeah, this is thick. So it becomes sludged. Yeah, that's so what it looks like. A lot of people don't realize it, but you want to change oil once a year um, because it also becomes bad over time. It actually accumulates a lot of moisture, which also obviously creates this. So if you don't change your oil um, once a year, then you're probably gonna run into issues like this. But you wanna change it, usually I recommend every 5,000 on these motors or once a year. So if you don't drive your car 5,000 miles a year, like me for example, yeah. change it once a year. <laughs> yeah, cause I drive the hell out of my car and I wanna make sure it's up to date. And like I said earlier in the video, I felt weird vibrations. Yep. Explain that if you can. So oil on these car is a huge factor. Actually on a lot of cars nowadays. So oil actually controls your vandals, your VVTI or VTEC on pretty much every car. So VVTI, you know, VTEC, vandals, they're all the same thing. They're variable about timing. Oil actually uses or is being used for oil pressure to regulate that. Now, if you have old oil that's thick, it's not gonna flow consistently and it's gonna create issues with timing. So a lot of guys actually have like N54s, for example, you get a lot of vandals codes. Sometimes it could be due to oil. On your case, with oil being this sludged, you're not gonna flow enough oil to control that timing. You can see how slow it's draining down. Yeah. It's pretty thick. So for me, when I was sitting at stoplights, I felt my steering wheel kind of vibrate every vibrate, once in a while. And then you see your RPM jumping. RPMs were jumping, not a lot, but they were definitely moving to a point where I was like, this doesn't feel normal. Yeah. And that could be because of this. Yeah, I would say it's probably because of this. Old oil, sludged oil. It's gonna create issues. For and animals. that could be technically in terms for other people to understand is that thicker oil can hurt your timing. Correct. Which is, can cause vibration in your car. Yeah, okay. vibration or even potentially misfires or your car goes oh, if it's, limp mode. if it's that bad. If it's that bad. Okay, and that's like if you don't change your oil for like 30,000 miles. <laughs> which I've seen. Have you really? Yeah. Oh no. So certain cars, like for example, Honda is very sensitive to the viscosity of oil. Mm -hmm. So if you actually run a different viscosity on those cars, you get issues with timing. And in certain cases where it actually doesn't lubricate certain cam lobes or actual you know, rod bearings, it can actually damage that as well. So thick oil, you're not going to allow enough lubrication to flow through as well. So that's the reason why you want to consistently change your oil. Do you think that contributes a lot to rod bearing issues is people don't take care of the oil enough too? Yes. So that can be a big factor. That can be it. a big factor because BMW recommends to change oil on these cars every 10,000 miles. Why would you do that? But then people think, oh, 10,000 miles, but it's also once a year. So it's not just 10,000 miles. Yeah. Once a year too, because it becomes sludged, becomes thick. It can sit for a while and yeah. it becomes thicker. Exactly, I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of these cars, you know, they're, you know, some cars are even like you know, eight years old and they only have like 30,000 miles. Mm -hmm. You know, like mine, for example, it's 2014, I have 28,000 miles. The car sits most of the time, but still change the oil once a year. A lot of guys in the East Coast actually do that. They change the oils once a year. Oh, because the weather. They don't drive it. Yeah. So they know. But California, you know, we drive our cars whenever <laughs> we want. <laughs> I'm always the kind of person that's like, oh, I'll wait, it's fine, it doesn't matter. But then you start seeing stuff like this and yeah. I don't want to have to deal with anything worse than rod bearings. Exactly. Because you never know what could be beyond that. <laughs> or damaging like timing components. Yeah. Yeah. Because lubrication with oil is used for everything. Mm. Timing components, timing chain, timing guides, camshafts, everything. Oil is like the foundation of making your car like stay together and yeah. stay healthy. It is. It's more important than cooling, I'll tell you that. So if you think of fluids, this is like the first thing you want to think of yeah, is changing your oil. Yep, once a year, minimum. So the filter that we use is Molly. That's how you pronounce it. Molly? Yeah. And it comes with the O-ring for the filter, two crush washers, and then one more for the actual housing itself. We don't need to replace this, not unless we fully disassemble it. Always replace these crush washers. They're one time use, the copper. So every time replace them? Always. A lot of guys tend to reuse it. I mean, you can, but do you really want to cause a leak? The last thing you want is for oil to leak out. I like to put the socket on it, angle it, put it on. Oil doesn't get all over my hands. So now all the oil's out of the car. Yeah, it's all out. Certain cars have different drain points. Um, yours has two. A lot of exotics and supercars actually have up to like eight different drain areas. Jeez. Yeah. 
and that's so the oil that doesn't just sit in one spot. Yeah, because it's dry sump. So what that is is there's actually an auxiliary pump feeding oil through. And there's no oil. There is an oil pan, but it's not like this style. So right over here is where the filter's at, your oil filter. It has a little tab right here. Actually, a 36 millimeter. And what I do is because once you remove this filter, oil is going to come out. So I take a rag and I wrap around it to absorb it so we don't make a mess. Oh, so oil will spill out when you do that? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Right about there. Take an extension and a ratchet and break it loose. And I bring it up once I break it loose to absorb all that oil. Yeah, you can see some of it coming out. Right, it's there. See it? Yep. And then if it's really old, your filter is going to stick in there. And like that's ours. a sign of it being very old. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that doesn't look too good. You see all the oil right there? Yeah. Once I pull this up, it'll flow down. Damn. Bad. Yeah. Then grab the rag, and then we're going to cover it so the oil doesn't spill all over the engine bay. Appreciate that. Like that. So we take it over here, and then I'll lower this down so we can have an idea. Jeez. So. How old do you think that filter is, if you had to guess? Because it looks like it's pretty beat up. I mean, what we're doing is we're going to feel it at the same time. I don't want you to do that because it's pretty oily. If you actually feel it, you can feel how hard it is. Mm -hmm. This is paper cartridge, so it's supposed to be pretty soft. And it's stiff. It's pretty stiff. Dang. It, this is like cardboard now. Like, see this certain areas? Like, yeah. Barely it reflects it. So, this is probably like maybe a year, two years old. When you get the other filter, I want to see how much of a difference it is. Because you yeah. can see in the video, it's pretty stiff. Exactly. So, this is how it's supposed to look. It's paper. Yeah, there's much more movement to it. Yeah, so it still flexes, you know, you can flex it opposite way. That's mm -hmm. how it's supposed to be. So what happens is old filters over time, it accumulates a lot of dirt. And what happens is it actually collapses itself because air is not flowing through it. And then if you do that, it creates restriction and then increased oil pressure or in oil pressure loss. Usually increased oil pressure. So your filter can have a big part of it too. Huge. That's why you want to change it. So some people change it like, you know, once every two oil changes. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, change it every time. It's not that expensive. So some people may think it's just the fluid, yeah. but it's also the filter as well. Because this is going to accumulate any, you know, debris or, you know, it's metal or metal. So with lubrication, it's still going to help, but you're still going to get a lot of metal shaving. This is going to absorb that. The more metal it contains in here, the more it's going to restrict it. So. That's why you replace it. Every kit comes with two oil rings, one here and here. Take a flathead, pocket screwdriver. What is take, this part called? This is actual oil cap. Okay. Take the oil ring out like that, and then we got one more right here. Some people don't think that there is, but see? Oh, this one's old. This one's really old. That one's probably never been replaced, huh? No. So there's two oil rings that sit on the cap? Yeah. Okay. Jeez. So, we install this, and that's it. Then, obviously, I like to reuse the old oil that's in here, just to lubricate the old rings. If not, when you reinstall it, it might tear. Then we grab the filter, and shove it on, like that. And then, reinstall, by hand, of course, first. And once we get to that point, put it on. Is there a certain torque you put that to? Yeah, or is it mostly... so we're gonna torque it down to 40 newton meters okay. right after. Wipe it down first, nice and clean. You don't want this oil to drip yet. Now actually, your certain cars actually have a cap over this, and there's two tabs that you just pull up mm -hmm. and pop off the cap, and you gotta unplug the sensor. So if your car does have a cap, don't be afraid. It's the same thing, pop off the sensor right here. By pressing on the clip retainer, Pop that off, and then there's going to be two tabs, one on each side. Put your fingers underneath it, and then lift it up. Which car would have that? The LCIs have it. Yours is supposed to have it. What was it set at? 40 newton meters. Direct package from Castrol? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is this, so what makes this oil so special? It's actually the same oil BMW uses. So just recommended BMW by BMW. Names it. Castro Edge, Super Titanium. 1060 weight? Because 1060 is what we're using in your car. It's LL2, which is what BMW requires. On these cars, it's actually LL1. Mm -hmm. But the newer ones, they use LL2, but this is actually qualified for LL2. It's gonna be well. eight and a half, right? Eight and a half. Cool. Yes. Liters. <laughs> Gallons. <laughs> Imagine. It'd be so much fluid. <laughs>
now we got a key on the car and you got to make sure that uh, ignition on, engine off. So you got to press it twice. Um, then you got to make sure the door is closed. You have no lights on here whatsoever. It's going to show all these codes. You can actually just press BC to skip through them until there's nothing. And once you get to that point, there's a button, a dial right here on the cluster, right there. Mm -hmm. We're going to press and hold it. It's going to show up an exclamation point. And then we keep pressing it. Once we get into the menu, we let go. Then we're going to use the BC button and stop. So now we're going to press and hold this. And then that blinks up, press and hold it. Uh, we can go through all of this, so let me explain it for you guys. This one's oil, for oil change. Then we got this one, which is for um, emissions and servicing. Um, and then cabin filter as well. So, so essentially just filters. And this is so you can reset the light? You can reset the light or just know when you gotta change it. Okay. So I'll show like your next interval. And then this is for brake fluid. This is rear brake pad, front brake pad, and then just servicing. Just inspection, okay. kind of like what we're doing. So we're gonna reset this as well. Okay, so the timer, we let off the button, and it keeps going, and reset. So, it goes back to oil, and we're done. Cool, so when I initially came to you, I wanted to do a video on all the fluids, yes. but you were talking about how some of them don't have to be replaced. Transmission fluid, how does that work? So transmission fluid, technically, people, or BMW says it's lifetime, well, ZF does, but it accumulates a lot of, um, same thing like an oil filter, there's actually a filter on the transmission pan. Now that transmission pan is actually, it has a built-in filter into it. So you wanna change out the pan plus the filter. Um, that's going to, same thing, create a lot of blockage and reduce pressure. In this case, you know, dual clutch, you don't wanna do that. Um, but your car has, obviously, it's already been replaced, which we already inspected. Uh -huh. So but, when we first went through the car last time, yeah. you saw that it was already replaced. Already so replaced. we don't have to do that? No. Okay. Um, these cars with DCTs are known to start leaking and seeping by about 60,000 miles. But don't be confused because if you actually look at the side of the transmission, a lot of people will sell you on, you know, oh, you gotta replace the electronics leak, you gotta replace the side pan, blah, blah, blah. But for you guys, I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. There's actually a AC drain tube, which is actually for, you know when you turn the car and there's water underneath it? For the condensation. Yeah. It has to come out somewhere. Sure. The drain tube is right next to the transmission. So people will tell you it's leaking, but it's actually the water. From so that. that's like a trick for them to do and like yeah. upsell you. Yeah. Dang. But so most of the time you don't need to. I've never seen the side leak before. Okay. Ever. The pan itself I've seen leak, but not the side. So because for for transmission fluid, it's not really something you have to worry about. No. Once you see leakage, then change it. Okay. So you, you can just hold on. You can just deal with the transmission until something happens. Yeah. Okay. Until something happens. I mean, these are, transmissions are pretty much bulletproof. Sure. Dual clutch. You know, it's pretty reliable. It's well built. Um, maybe when you get to like 100K, that's where I would recommend to change up the pan, filter, and fluids. We'll be back in a future video to do that. Yeah. We'll come back to this in a couple months, but we'll, we'll do everything at that point. So then the diff fluid, how about so that? The diff fluid on these cars, they come with um, LSDs, but the type of LSDs on these car, well, just so people know, LSD stands for limited slip differential. So there's open diff, which is on traditional cars, but high performance cars such as this comes with limited slip differentials. Now there's different type of uh, differentials as well for limited slip. The specific one of this uses clutches. So you want to have the metal shaving that is worn down from the clutches on this to allow more engagement. A lot of times people replace the fluids on these and it starts to create it to slip. Um, just because you're losing material on that disc, you need that additional metal shaving inside of it to fill that void. So it's better to keep it in there. Yeah, always, always highly recommend just leave it. Okay. It's lifetime. You don't have to change it. Okay. So don't change it unless you, you know, really have issues with it. Unless there's signs of it. Yeah. Okay. Like you're starting to slip or having errors with it then that's what I recommend to do. Just don't do it as like preventative maintenance. That's where I'm at. I'm at the preventative side of like, what, what can I do to replace everything to make sure I'm okay? Yeah. But like we talked about, oil is like the foundation. Yep. You don't have to worry about transmission. No. Don't have to worry about differential. Coolant. Coolant. So coolant, a lot of people say, oh, you gotta change your coolant, you, know, you gotta do a coolant flush. Well, just so you guys know, European cars, specifically in this case, BMW, it's considered lifetime cooling. You never have to change it. BMW would never recommend for you to replace cooling. Hence why even on your service light when we were going through it, on the cycle, there is no coolant light mm -hmm. for us to actually- So it doesn't service. like pop up as like an no. issue. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Windshield wiper fluid? <laughs> Just so you guys know. On your car, it's all black, plus the tube is right here, the filler tube. 
Um, pop this off, and then we'll go ahead and top it off with blinker fluid. Blinker fluid. <laughs> now you pull the whole engine out, and then you have your reservoir for your blinker fluid. Exactly. Behind everything. Behind. It's everything. on the, the firewall. No, it's, so you actually got to remove the firewall. Like and the de welded. Get everything out of there. Everything. Engine has to come out as well. <laughs> okay. Well, now people know how to replace their blinker fluid. <laughs> Power steering fluid. Power steering fluid. So. I actually had issues with that on my E90. Yeah. When it was when I first got the car, it was whining. It made a really strange noise. Yep. And we topped it off, and it went away. Yeah. So sometimes over time. It's not supposed to leak, but there's a chance that it could leak or somebody serviced it and they didn't bleed out the system So you're gonna open up this cap and we're gonna take a look at this and Based on the level of fluid inside of here. We can see it right here uh -huh. This is where you want it to be which is exactly where yours is Okay now another thing that we're going to do is let me show you guys the actual fluid so same concept as you know, the transmission, the differential, it's metal on metal, we're using lubrication. It's going to accumulate a lot of metal shavings inside of there. The fluid is actually supposed to be green. So if you look inside of here, you see it's green. Yep, now we're gonna pour this back in. And that's power steering fluid, power right? Steering. Okay. And then what we're going to do now is take a rag. This is how you're going to see the condition of your fluid. We're going to dip it inside of here, and we're going to let it drip onto the rag, and it's green. See that? What would make it change color though, just being old? Just being old, same thing, accumulates moisture. Um, this does have a little bleeder on it. So air is able to come in and go through this tube. It's designed to allow air to come out. So that sounds like that's pretty much the last of the fluids. Yeah, so same thing with these though. These are lifetime. If it starts getting brown, change it. What would cause it to leak, like my E90? Leak, um, it could be you know, a hose or it could be you know, power steering, uh, it could be the steering rack. On your car, I feel like it was just venting too much out of here, creating too much pressure, and it started coming out. The reservoir started getting really dirty. Sure. It was slightly low, so we just filled it up, topped it off, and it worked. I want it to be perfect, because if it's too low, and there's fluid in here, but it's too low, and you actually take a corner like you did. Yeah. So you take a corner. Now, obviously, kinetic energy, all that weight, fluids, all that stuff is gonna shift to one side, and it starves. It needs to be at the minimum. And that's what my car did. It exactly. was making weird noises when it would turn. Yeah. So that's a sign of it. What we'll do in a future video is probably do like spark plugs and air filter and stuff like that. But as far as the fluids goes, let's run through it one more time. So there's going to be coolant, which is here. It's lifetime. Doesn't need to be serviced, replaced, or anything. Power steering fluid, which is the reservoir is here. Same thing, lifetime. Doesn't need to be replaced. Oil, these guys please every 5,000 miles or once a year. Not 10,000, <laughs> not five years, okay? Once a year, 5,000 miles. And then we have the transmission fluid, which is underneath the car. And then we have the differential fluid, which both those don't need to be serviced unless you're seeing issues with it. You know, don't fix what's not broken. If you guys need anything, Precision Dynamics, call them up, email, text. Stop by, whatever. Every, DM them anything you need. Um, or contact you. <laughs> yes, sir. Alrighty. Cool, thanks bro. Right, no problem. Before we end the video, we're gonna turn the car on and just see what Mike thinks. So after you change your oil, you don't have to do anything special, right? No, just turn it on, reset the lights, all that good stuff. You're probably gonna notice a difference in throttle response as well. Okay, so throttle response will change a little bit. Yeah, just because it's old oil. Is there like a break-in period? No. No. Literally change the oil, drive it, and you're good. I'm currently in the car right now, just driving down the street. And it feels good. The vibration definitely went away, and it sounds better. It feels healthier. Much, much, much better. Uh, simple oil change can really make a car feel 10 times better. Plus, when you're at a stoplight, that vibration is no longer there. It's gone. So the oil was the issue with one of the vibration problems I had with the car. You still feel the idle, but it's a healthy idle. The car just feels like it's running a little bit better. I'm gonna go on the freeway and uh, it should be fine though. Thanks Precision, appreciate you guys. Just got back to the office and I know that fluids don't really show anything or it's not anything that's like noticeable but um, I just did a pretty hard pull going down the street and it feels great. I mean it, it feels healthier, the vibrations are definitely much better. The car feels great waiting on my plates to come in still and uh, I have an insane amount of parts coming for this car. Yeah, that's it. Fluids for the E90 XM3. If you guys can, please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up if this video brought you any value. The thumbs up helps my channel tremendously, like I said in the beginning of the video. So if you can, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and stay tuned for a lot more E90X footage coming soon. See ya.